All right, it's Mr. Robs. Hey, Mr. Co. And we are here to talk about linear regression today. All right, so with linear regression, what it is, is it's basically we're looking for relationships between two variables. All right, so some of the examples that I know of, relationships between two variables, is if I look at um, height of people versus foot size, there is a pretty strong correlation between these two variables. As my foot size increases, so typically does my height. And I would guess that that correlation would be fairly strong. So we're looking for just any kind of relationship between, between variables. However, just because there's a, there seems to be a correlation does it not imply a causation. Because there's oftentimes some other variable coming into play. A good example of that is um, if I look at the number of drownings at the beach and ice cream sales, they are strongly correlated. But I would not say that ice cream sales causes people to drown. What okay. I would think is ice cream sales would, would imply that the temperature is hot, which means that there's more people at the beach, which means there's more chance for drowning. So there's not a direct... Ice cream sales does not cause drownings. Okay, but they are, there is a correlation. There is a relationship there somewhere. It's not causation. All right, so with our correlation, though, the correlation, we have to look at the patterns. Here's three different kinds of patterns. And this is the directions, okay? This one, if I have dots going in this direction from a scatter plot, this looks like there is a positive correlation. Okay, just like the height and the foot size. One goes up, the other goes up. Right, and it's, we're looking kind of at the slope of the dots. If we look at this one, it has a downward slope, so this is a negative correlation, or negative, negative direction. Okay. And this one kind of looks like there's a line going this way, which means there is no correlation, or zero, so no correlation. Is that how you would say it? Yeah, no correlation or no relationship would be, just be another word. But right, no relationship. Between the two variables. Okay. Okay, so this is the direction. There's three ways to describe these scatter plots. Direction is one of them. Let's look at another one now. Now we're going to look at the strength of these scatter plots. If we look at these one, two, and three here, notice how closely the dots are here versus they're a little bit more spread out here and a little bit more spread out here. So this is the strength. This is strong, this is moderate, and this is weak. Okay. But all those first, those top three, they're all positives. So we've got positive strong, positive moderate, and positive weak correlations. Right. Similarly, these are all negative direction, but again, this is strong, moderate and weak and it's kind of just you just have to kind of eyeball it and kind of get a sense there's no exact real answer for this from my experience you just have to see well that looks like it's a really strong relationship versus that's a really weak one yeah the next thing to look at is the trend or the pattern well if i look at this one versus this one this one looks like there is a very strong correlation, a very strong linear correlation. So it's positive, it's strong, and it's linear. Those are the three ways to describe this one. Now this one is not linear. There is definitely a pattern, but it's not a linear. Yeah, so we can't say no relationship there, could we? No, but we just know it's not a linear. So not linear relationship. And so basically, at this point, we're only concerned with it's either linear or not linear. Yep. And if I just had a total random scattering of dots, again, that's a non-linear relationship. The last thing we're going to look at are any different points. And a fancy word for that is outlier. Okay? I know if I look at this big concentration of data points here, it makes a line of best fit right through here. And this point here is along the general trend. Because it's along the general trend, it is not an outlier. So it kind of fits with the other bits of data, even though it's not near to them. Right, exactly. However, 
This one here is not in the general trend of the data. So this one here is what we call an outlier because it is outside, outside the trend, the data trend. So it's out on its own. Right, out on its own. And so when we describe data sets, we have to, let me just make what up one here. I'm going to make a quick data set. We have to do two things. We look at four things. We look at the uh, direction. And this direction is? Are we positive? Positive. The second thing we look at is? Strength. Strength. And how would you describe this one here? Uh, moderate or weak, I think. Yeah, I'd say moderate or weak. Or slash weak. So you're not going to get it wrong if you call that weak or moderate. Right. Both, call, are, both are acceptable answers, right. I think. You call it strong, then we'd question that. Um, the trend or pattern, is it linear or nonlinear? Yes, I'd say it looks linear. I would say it looks linear as well. And then the fourth one are outliers. Any outliers in this? No, I'd say they, there's, there's, there's some away from the line, but there's nothing out on its own. There's nothing way, way off the rest of them. Right. If I would put this point up over here, yeah, that would that be, would an, be outlier. an outlier. Okay. Done.